So let's consider to start with um, this conquest of the Gauls, um, the central achievement, you could say, of the Roman Empire um, was achieved by Julius Caesar in, um, from uh, 59 to 49 BC, conquering the top um, two-thirds of what they called Gallia, and we now think of as France. Um, there's a famous picture here of the um, Gaulish general Vercingetorix on his way to surrender to Julius Caesar at the last there. Um, this is what, it's, it's quite interesting actually that one has to take one's hat off to our, um, our cousins, the French, in that they try to, in their um, art, to some extent, dramatize some of these things that we all know about, that the Romans conquered Gaul. So what did it mean for actual people at the time? And it's quite nice to see uh, somehow the scale of a Roman camp and how big it, it must have seemed, uh, how intimidating it must have seemed, even to someone who was a general on behalf of most of the Gaulish population at the time. So this is La Motte's picture of the surrender of Vercingetorix. Now, what Caesar was doing, and this is not what you find in Caesar's Gallic Wars, was stamp leading to the decline and extinction of the culture which produced the picture you see in front of you. This is what was taken of the Gundestrup cauldron. It's actually found in Denmark. But it shows items of what must have been an extremely complicated story which was the myth of this god, Kernunnos, about which we now know nothing. This is what happens when people give up their language and they give up. They inevitably give up their culture. You could say that they were doing perfectly well, and in the three or four centuries it took for Gaulish to die out, to be replaced all over what is now France by um, a form of Latin which developed into French, uh, different forms of French, of course, um, Occitan as well as Francian. But that procedure, which in, actually was also accompanied with the uh, spread of the Christian religion um, around France, led to the loss of a, an exceedingly complicated learned tradition of doctrine and of story, which we know was there, because Caesar does tell us that it took people 20 years in order to get fully educated as a Druid in the Gaulish tradition. It's all gone. We don't know what it was. We're all the poorer by this. And there were some amazing things here, you see. Um, commercial advertising had, uh, had realized that sex sells in the first century AD in Gaul. Here is a completely bit of gratuitous eye candy from a potter's stamp from Rouen in the first century AD. All it says in Gaulish is, made by Rectugnos, son of Sulla. And if you remember the pot, you'll, you may not remember why you remember the pot. Now, what the Romans had done was effectively replace the previous, um, much less systematic and certainly less literate um, imperial power which had taken over Europe before them, which was the Gauls, and who apparently did it on the basis of their skill in iron foundry. They were the first civilization to bring iron um, to, to Europe. Now, what the Romans did in those five centuries from 100 BC to 400 AD was to have this language neutralizing effect in a vast area across most of um, the Mediterranean as well as um, Western um, Europe. Um, in the lands under Euro Roman administration, there had been 60 languages we know when they started. It went down to 12 in that period. In um, and outside Africa and the East, um, the number, half of those figures fell, fell to less than half. So from 30, we went down to five. In fact, we can say what those five languages were. 
Latin, Welsh, Basque, Albanian, and Gaulish. And we've just seen that Gaulish was not long for this world in 400 AD. Um, other languages are just names. Lusitanian, Celtiberian, Tartessian, Iberian, Ligurian, Lepontic, Retic, Venetic, Etruscan, Piscine, Oscan, Mesapian, Sickle, Sardinian, Dacian, Getic, and Peonian. So that was where they were on the map of Europe in 500 BC. Little did they know they were not long for this world. A thousand years later, Latin was everywhere where you can see um, horizontal lines on this map. So we've got much, it wasn't exactly a monoculture because there was this matter of the uh, Germanic invasions which came in in the 5th century AD and brought Germanic languages as a sort of overlay across the um, Romance languages, something we don't tend to remember so much now because we think of the languages which have remained as the Romance languages or as the uh, French say, the Néo-Romains. So they are the ones we think that came from Roman. They were affected, however, to some extent, superficially, at least, by Germanic languages. But inevitably, the number of languages there is much fewer than it was before. So that is what we lost when the Romans came. And we perhaps gained, the Romans did many things for us, but they certainly didn't leave us with um, linguistic diversity. And the result was that a lot of things got lost to this wonderful, all-encompassing Roman civilization.